Hey everybody, a quick note about today's episode before we get started. We're going to be heading into the town of Flatwoods, which has probably the highest density of story and lore holotapes anywhere in the entire game. Now I don't want to just skip these because I know there's going to be people who want to listen to them, but at the same time I know there's other people who won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put timestamps on screen so that you can skip the holotapes if you want to, and I'm going to keep that convention up for the rest of this playthrough. But today in particular, there's going to be a large portion of the episode dedicated to just listening to holotapes. And if that's not your thing, then this just might not be the episode for you. And that's fine. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Fallout 76 Story Mode playthrough. In the last episode, we left the vault for the first time as a little baby level 1, actually level 2 by the time you get out of the vault. We came down here and talked to Duchess at the Wayward. And Duchess gave us a couple of leads. Well, one lead and one task. The lead she told us is to head to Flatwoods, which is down the road this way, if we want to find the Overseer, who we're trying to track down. And she also asked us for help with a job. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start on that this time. So I just placed my camp item right here next to this tree. So I can build a camp right here. Let's enter build mode. And we want to build a work, weapons workbench, because that's an optional objective. So let's just throw one of those down somewhere. And we want to build a crane, what is it, a crane treasure hunting sign. Let's just drop that down. We're going to have to power that. Broadcast tape issued. Please deposit data tape into any relay system terminal. What am, what am I hearing? Oh, okay. Uh, let's power that. Generators. Do I have the scrap to build a generator? Yes, I do. Let's place that down, run a wire from there to there. You know, while we're in here, let's go ahead and drop down a stash box. Because that'll be useful. And a scrap box. Yes, I do have Fallout first, so I can use the scrap box for storing of junk. And I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Now, load broadcast tape into a radio tower and activate the connection. Okay, where's the nearest radio tower? Down towards Flatwoods. Okay, well, let's just start moving that way. Because we have a lead to search for the Overseer in Flatwoods. And we were going to start using a pistol, weren't we? What are you pointing a gun at out there? Hello, friend! What? Are you okay? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this guy. Hello! You guys! Okay, let's let's be cautious about the Brotherhood. They seem to be like... They know secrets of the devil or something. They can do things that humans shouldn't be able to do. Moving on down the road from the Brotherhood checkpoint. There's a deer. Let's try this out for the first time. Now that we have concentrated fire, we can target heads with guns. And entirely miss repeatedly and run out of AP. Not sure that's an improvement over our combat knife, to be honest. There's, oh, there's a dead deer and some wild mongrels. Sort of walking menacingly towards me. Yep, yep, they want trouble. Ooh, the robot's helping me. He's uh, injured. Robot killed him. Welcome to Flatwoods, home of the green monster. What the heck is the green monster? There's a mole rat. Not anymore. Gym session notes. Sets of 12 reps. Let's see. Dumbbell bicep curls. Price of extensions. Hmm. And back extensions, yeah. A little peeve about the lack of proper equipment. No bother. Chin up. Only eight more luxury coffins to make quota in backwoods. I mean, flatwoods. <laughs> uh, be 
difficult given the uh, financial situation around here. Just need to remind them of our friends, the Chinese. <laughs> I'll be back on the plane to Ipswich within a fortnight. <sighs> Gather it'll be the bench press today. Yeah, again. Okay, we're over encumbered, probably just because I just picked up an 80 pound barbell. I don't know if that actually weighs 80 pounds, but it might. It does as well. Okay, nothing else particularly interesting here, just some junk, which I picked up. We'll move a little further towards Flatwoods. Let's see, who goes there? Oh, go for it. Let's play that. I'm going to turn the uh, voice volume up again. It's still a little quiet. Welcome back, dear listeners. It's time once again to put aside all you think you know, all you believe to be true. Time to open your mind to the strange, bizarre, and sometimes terrifying world that exists in the shadows and fringes of our own, where myth, legend, and rumor are made real. Yes, it's time for more thrilling... Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Tonight's episode, Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods, is brought to you by Sugar Bombs, the breakfast cereal with explosive great taste and 100% of the recommended daily allowance of sugar. Get your morning started right with Sugar Bombs. Our tale begins on a fateful night when a young pioneer scout, Red Fisher, finds himself in quite the predicament, having taken a spill and fallen into a dark place. Ugh. Where am I? Jack? Bip? Mr. Bailey? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Who's there? I, I can't see you. Me? My name's Sally. What's yours? Fred, are you okay, Fred? I think so. My head's a little woozy. Must have hit it when I fell. Oh, no. Did you get lost, too? Well, sort of. What I mean is that I was camping with my scout troop by the lake near Flatwoods. There were these lights kind of dancing in the sky. Neat. I guess. Anyway, we heard some weird noises, and the guy's double dog dared me to go look. So, I did. All by yourself? You're really brave. Shucks. Thanks. I followed the noises to an entrance of an old mine. It smelled awful there. Like rotten eggs, but worse. Suddenly, there was this bright light shining down on me. I was super scared and ran to the mine to hide. But everything felt strange. Like, my feet weren't even touching the ground. Everything went black, and I woke up here in the dark. That all happened to me, too. We'll just do what my dad says. When you've strayed or lost your foot, do what's best and stay put. They said they'd bring him soon. There are other people here? A very good question indeed. Tune in next time to find out the answer in the chilling conclusion of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. Okay, well, that was Who Goes There Part 1 about the strange encounter in Flatwood. Sort of like an old-timey radio drama. We don't have Part 2 yet, so we don't know how the story ends just yet. I did, uh, while we were listening to that, drop my survival tent up there, you may have seen. And that's a perk of Fallout First. It lets you call forth basically your stash box and scrap box. I got rid of the, all that junk we were carrying that was making us over-encumbered, particularly that barbell. So there was one more holotape up here. Survivor story, Willie May. Let's check that one out. I press the button. Hush. I think it's recording now. Shush. Hello. Hello there. Oh, I think it's working. <laughs> I hate these things. This is Willie May. And I was asked to talk a bit about my life since the war to help educate future children someday. I think that's nice. I thought I'd just watch my programs and entertain the grandkids in my retirement. But that didn't turn out to be the case. 
I'm just glad they all made it to the vault in time, you see. When I saw it in a dream, I knew my prayers were answered. My husband Frank used to work in the mines. Just a bit before the war, there was news of tremors, and he didn't come home. I don't know what happened to him or why he never came home for sure. And between you and me, I'm fine with that. Since the war, I've just read my old newspapers and listened to music. It's very peaceful for once, which is just right nice by me. You ever hear of the Watoga Times Atomic Lottery? The winner got ten years worth of Blamco mac and cheese, and Salisbury steak, and, and Nuka-Cola, of course. I played that lottery for twenty years, and I finally won the month before the war. It lasted only eight years, though. But who can you complain to? By the time it ran out, I had heard the responders' radio broadcast, so I went out to find them and get supplies. Bless their hearts. Well, I'm going home now. For a bit, anyways. How do I turn this thing off? Oh, blast these things. Not this button. Not this one. Oh, oh, here it is. So, as you can hear, around Flatwoods, they had some of the survivors record their stories to tell about the war, to make a record for the future. That was the first one we found. There'll be several more of those in town as we go. I will uh, play them because I think they're interesting, but I'll also show you when to skip forward to if you don't want to hear it, if you just want to skip past. I did notice while we were listening to that that there's a like a lookout tower up on the hill there. So I put a marker on my map just kind of guessing where that is because I want to get up there. Actually, might be a little farther out on top of that rocky thing, but we'll find out when we get up there. There's also apparently a, a dead, I think that's a rad roach. Floating in the air there. Let's continue moving in the Flatwoods. Search for the traces of the Overseer in Flatwoods. Take a walk down this street and see what's uh see what's up here. A couple of dead people on this porch. Another survivor story. Colonel. This is Colonel, is it? And a raider corpse. All right, let's uh, get another one playing. Boy, it's been like 10 years since I did one of these. Dasa said she lost my original one though. Bummer. My name is Colonel, so, hey, hi. Uh, let's see, um, bombs fell when I was a kid. My dad died in the war. You know, this is all pretty normal. My story is, I guess, boring. Uh, so Dasa found me when I was 13 or so. She brought me the responders. They taught me everything. I became a volunteer. It was great. For the past five years, I've been a responder myself. I help kids who lost their families. I get them safe, trained. Just act like a big brother. Every year we find fewer people, though, so... I don't know. Things are not good out there. Just getting simple food and water is tough. And the Brotherhood. Well, we thought that would be different. We thought everything would be different, though. Uh, well, so anyway, maybe in ten years, Dasa will ask me to do another one of these survivor stories. <laughs> Till then, peace, Appalachia. So that was Colonel's story. We'll be finding a few more of his around town. Oh, hello. Red roaches are... That, was that just hovering? Oh, that was soap on a rope. Well, okay, fair enough. Okay, let's... I think we've cleared this building out. I hear a cow. 
probably means there's a cow. Yes, yes. Hello, I, I can milk you. Thank you. Okay, another survivor story. Let's listen to the Miguel Caldera. Ah, hello, person in the distant future. Uh, Dasa told us these tapes would be used as historical records someday. <laughs> Pretty nifty. So, my name is Miguel Caldera. Let's see, uh, my story begins in an office. I used to be a programmer at Vault Tech. One of many. No, nobody special, you see. And, you know, and, and that's okay. I used to stare out that window by the coffee machine and think, shucks, I wish I could leave this job and hike in the woods every day. <laughs> I'd dream about walking the Appalachian Trail, setting up camp wherever I liked, and traveling with close friends. Uh, eh, dreams kept me going. And, well, you know, when the bombs fell, I was terrified. Just like anybody else. I wasn't in a vault, so I just, you know, I had to figure it all out too. The responders found me. I had a little campsite, some supplies. I hacked a Protectron to guard me while I slept, but I missed people. I did. It's been alright, you know? The apocalypse and all. I know that seems weird, but I have freedom now. I can actually help people. I even met somebody. A volunteer who delivers supplies. <laughs> Imagine that, right? Even when you think everything is over, it's... it's not. It goes on. I mean, it's awful to... You know, don't get me wrong. All the people dead and hurt. But... Those are things beyond my control. So, you know, I, I, I'm making the best of it. These days, I'm important. People treat me like I matter because, well, there's so few of us that you know, we can't afford to think otherwise. So for all you future people, just know that we lived through something. Horrible. But we did it. Somehow alive and if you're hearing this then well I guess at least some of us made it right so hey chin up kiddo you'll be okay okay well, that was Miguel's story and as you can see I found Delbert's terminal here and I'm just kind of going through his journal entries quickly Once again, if you want to read them, and I recommend you do read, um, pause the pause the video, read each screen. I just think it'll take too much of uh, too much momentum out of the playthrough if I sit here and read every terminal entry as I come across it. So it'll be your choice, sort of an opt-in thing. Did notice uh, they eat ribeye every day. You can see past favorites ribeye. Schedule, ribeye, and then they had training, which is the how to make ribeye steak, get some meat from a cow, toss it on the fire. I'm assuming you're Delbert. Yes, you are. We got another survivor story here. Let's get that plan. Reverend Delbert Winters here, born and raised in this very town. Met my own church to the responders for their outpost here, and uh, you're welcome. The responders are on a true mission, you see. Helping folks through thick and thin. Till the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened, I figured like most, it was time. This was the end. But, but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake. That we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrong. Didn't give enough to the charity man. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to been thought. So I asked him. I asked how. Why? I thought 
got your wars on Earth. I'm ready to fight them up there by your side. <clears throat> then, in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind a dumpster. You ought to cook that first, I warned them. Seemed obvious. We tried but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. But until then, let's share a home-cooked meal together, all right? So Dilbert there found his meaning in the apocalypse by uh, making people food and teaching them how to cook and keep themselves healthy. Got a little like community garden here. The outskirts of Flatwoods. Flatwoods seems to have had a group known as the Responders sort of taken up this as their home. And we're all cooperating together to try to help each other out. A little campsite. Oh, there's ghouls here. Those ghouls are alive. We seem to have frozen them in their stand up animation. That happens sometimes in this game if you kill them while they're standing up in mid animation. I hate Flatwoods. Let's see what that has to say. We're just going to grab a quick uh, 30 second nap here. This heals you and if you stay in it for, I don't know how long it is, 20 seconds maybe, you get a bonus to XP earned for the next hour. There we go, well rested. Let's get back on our way. Do remember we did level up earlier and I, I never took advantage of that. So let's do the level up now. We get a perk pack because it's a even numbered level. Up to level 10 you get a new perk pack every even numbered level and then after level 10 it's every fifth level. All right, do we want any of those? Probably none of those are useful to us right at the moment. Wouldn't mind taking agility so that we can have more um, action points. We'll take action boy. Let's get action boy in the in the works. So equip that. Um, we might as well equip that. We might as well equip that. Oh, part two of who goes there. Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. In the last episode, pioneer scout Brett Fisher met a curious girl named Sally while hiding in the dark. But as it turned out, they weren't alone. There are other people here? Yeah, they probably just went to get more food. They'll be back soon enough. You can wait with me, and they'll give you food too. You just have to do what they want. What do you mean? When they want to play games with 
you. Games? What kind of games? I'm still learning the rules. Mostly, they're kind of boring and only hurt when they use the needles. Needles? Yeah, you know, like at the doctor. This doesn't sound like any game I know. It sounds downright awful and these people sound really bad. We have to get out of here. No, no, stay put, stay put, stay put, stay put. Okay, okay, stop screaming. Ah, the light, it's so bright. That's where they come in to bring food or when it's time to play. <gasps> Sally, what's that helmet thing you're wearing? It looks like it's screwed into your head. was found days later, wandering by the river outside Flatwoods. He was disoriented, but unharmed, save for two small wounds on each temple. To this day, Fred is convinced his strange encounter was real, and even continues to search high and low for a missing girl named Sally, whom he swears he met. So I leave it to you to decide, dear listeners. Was this simply the wild imagination of a frightened boy lost in the woods? Or was Fred Fisher, in fact, abducted by brainwashing aliens from outer space? Be sure to tune in next week for another thrilling chapter of Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Okay, well, sounds like that's some sort of an alien abduction story. As we were listening to that, we walked a little deeper in the Flatwoods and found what looks like where they were feeding people, their communal uh, serving area. A couple of possums wandering around. This is like a, a diner or something? Flatwoods Tavern. Volunteers needed. New 10mm pistol. Not bad. Disease cure. Self-registration kiosk. Let's give the diner a shot. Not today. Oh, hi. Uh, Chloe? Oh, hi. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see you there. She's the best guardian of girls. Are you here for the responder training? Um... Yes? Then you're not alone. A lot of people come here because of that radio message the responders left. That's what brought me here too. At first I was planning to just do the training and move on, but honestly, I kind of like it here. I really enjoy meeting all the people that pass through and hearing their stories. Wait a minute. Are you one of those people who was in Vault 76? Yep, that's me. I knew it! I could tell just by looking at you. I've always thought that life in a vault must be so amazing, with the robots and all the machines and having everything you need every day. Best of all, you're safe, which, let me tell you, is a thing us outsiders very rarely get to feel. Though I guess you're one of us now, so that's all in the past for you. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I could shake <laughs> her down. Uh, yeah, see you later. See ya. Take care of yourself, Heather. We can unlock this. And there was a dude in there. Help! Someone please help me! Please let me out! Please! Please! I'm begging you! Don't leave me here! Please! Please! I'll give you anything you want! Money? Uh, uh, go to the graveyard behind the 
church. The rainbow is uh, grave. Stand on it. Walk directly across the river. Uh, halfway up the hill. Uh, there's a small clearing. My savings are in an old stump. A little bit off the right. I swear. Please, please, please. Don't leave me here, please. Okay, well, what is this? Let's let's leave this for the moment because I don't want to forget what we just heard. Go to the graveyard behind the church and look across the hill. Still picking up stuff. Why am I still picking up stuff? Go to the graveyard behind the church. Hi there. Okay, is there a graveyard back here? There is as well. Look across the river up the hill. Oh, hello. I'll come back for you. And halfway up the hill to a small clearing is a hollowed out stump. Am I remembering that right? Hello. Let me get back over here where we left off. Another survivor story here. Let's listen to that. We call it the Great War now. It's not been long and things have been rough. Welcome to Survivor Stories. I'm Dasa Ben Ami, a responder. I've been working with the responders for a couple years now. I'm from Charleston originally, so it was easy to join up. What wasn't easy was the work. Rebuilding Appalachia from the rubble while survivors flock to us regularly from all over. So many have come and gone. Their stories untold, their names lost to time. I thought we should preserve this history somehow. I've decided to ask people to record their thoughts, their stories, anything they want to preserve forever. I'll call this series the Survivor Stories. I'll start with me. I was an anthropology PhD student at Vault Tech University, final year. I was printing my thesis when I heard the sirens. I thought for sure my father, a vault tech employee, could take us all with him, but uh, only two reservations came through. I refused to go. With my little brother, he went to the vault. They could not persuade me, though they tried. In the end, I pushed them inside, it, and that was it. After that, I, I went back home to Charleston and, well, survived. Eventually, the responders formed, and I, I signed up right away. It was so hard. The flood was devastating. Relocating to Morgantown Airport and now Flatwoods has been... I, I remain optimistic. Been with them now for, uh, oh, I guess two years. We have big plans. We can do so much to help. Maybe, just maybe, we can rebuild enough to be okay. And in the meantime, I will continue to record stories of survivors when I can. We are your history. This is Dasa Ben Ami, signing off for now. We got another survivor story right here, Tabitha. What do you want me to say exactly? Yeah, so just talk about how you got here and maybe a little bit about your life. This is a historic document. Go ahead, Tabitha. Okay, 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 so, well, thanks. Ah, uh, okay. <sighs> I've been sober for nine days. I got here nine days ago. My name is, is Tabitha. And this is my story. I just found out about everything. The war, the bombs, I, I just... I just realized this was, uh, <laughs> really happening. 
For years, I thought the cans were playing tricks with my mind, hurting my brain. I thought it was the worst trip ever. Every time I had come out of my haze long enough to look for food, I'd find more cans and, well, I kept going. And I kept seeing madness. Look, um, I would have been wandering around fighting giant rats and eating garbage if not for the responders. They're, they're good folks. That doc in the church, um, got me some meds that are helping out a lot. And they have group therapy meetings, and, and it's good, it's good, I, I, I think it's helping. But listen, um, you should avoid the mountains, <laughs> they'll just get you mixed up, get you doing things you don't want to do. Hurting people mostly. I mean, there are so many chems up there. I spent too long there, and I hurt people. I couldn't think right. I, I couldn't. Well, it, it's okay, Tabitha. Remember what we said in the group? Take your Addictol and rest, and things will be okay soon. It, it's okay. We're here for you. Yeah, I'm taking it. When I feel better, I'm going out west, though. Getting out of this place. Getting out, getting away from the cams, all of this. I feel better every day, but, you know, years of cams, years of rads, years of sleeping in the mud. It adds up. Yeah. I'm gonna get back to sleep now, okay? Okay. Thanks for sharing your story, Tabitha. Get some sleep. You'll be okay. You're safe now. There we had a pretty sad story about Tabitha. A uh, raider. We're hearing about the raider from her point of view. What the heck? And then in this uh, bin here is another survivor story, this time for Colonel. Uh, hi. Dasa asked me if I would talk about um, how I got here. She asked everybody, so I said, okay. My, name, my name's Colonel, and I'm 13 years old. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. Um, the bombs and the messed up people and the cows with two heads, all of it. It's your it bad. Break just to the living. Bad. I, I cheated on my spelling test. I, I kicked Chip Wilkins in the shins until he cried. I pushed Rosie McCloy down the stairs. Um... I cut holes in the bottom of all the gym shorts, and I put glue in the mashed potatoes in the cafeteria. I told Harold Newell to eat ten dead flies a day in order to grow muscles, hey, and uh, put Nuka-Cola in the rat cage water bottles at the pet the store. Flies, and, um, got you covered. I just wanted to say I'm sorry about everything. Because my dad said if I wasn't this way, the bad things wouldn't happen. I haven't seen daddy since the bombs, and... I, I guess he left because of that, too. It's okay. I'm, I'm trying to be good now, though. I'm, I'm not old enough to be a volunteer, but Dasa said I could help collect food and water, so I'm getting better, I promise. And, um, Daddy, if you're listening, I... I promise I won't be bad anymore, so you can come back now, okay? Okay. Bye. Pretty heartbreaking story of Colonel there, thinking that, uh, thinking that he was the reason that the world was destroyed. But we did find his older story on the other side of town there, and we know that 
he let that drive him to be a better person overall and to do good for the world, so maybe sort of consider that a good outcome of fundamentally a bad situation. Okay, we've got this uh, this one right here, which has the Overseer's Log for Flatwoods. Recall we came here to Flatwoods in the first place to find the Overseer, so... Search for traces of the Overseer. Here's a trace right here. Overseer's Log, town of Flatwoods. My god. There's no one here. The old tavern, the church. People were using them for shelter, but... They're gone. Mutations we expected, but there's something else, a disease. I was attacked by, well, it used to be a person, but it had these green glowing lesions and its voice, angry, tortured. We are one, one what? Whatever happened here is beyond anything we expected. And we expected a lot. Before they were wiped out, the survivors called themselves the Responders. Looks like they were made of firefighters, police, emergency medical staff. They even have an automated system to teach people about treating water, food, survival. I'm doing their tests, and you should too. I know it's even worse than we imagined, but... Someone's got to know where the missile silos are, and how to secure them. The responders are the best lead we have. This is the Overseer, signing off. So the Overseer made her way down here and encountered the Scorch, just like we did. I, I guess you probably noticed we, we're having some really weird furniture issues right now. Seems some of the furniture in this town isn't loading, but the... Uh, the things that's supposed to be sitting on them are loading, and just sort of hovering until I touch them. Dealing with survivor's guilt. Sermon here at the funeral home. I forgive you, Dad. That's from Colonel. Dear Daddy, that's another colonel. I'm staying in the bell tower in the church. I have cereal and games and a sleeping bag. For both of us, I will be waiting. I miss you, Dad. Yeah, pretty heartbreaking stories here. Survivor story, Sophie. Let's take a listen. Baby. 
Anyone with half a brain will go up to the mountains and drop the dead weight. Delbert already tried to stop me. Sorry to say nobody will be around to teach you how to eat shit now, Flatwoods. Bye, suckers. Love always, Sophie. There you have Sophie. Sounds like she was turned very bitter by her experiences. Can't really say, uh... Can't really say I know where she's coming from, but... I've never been in that sort of situation. So, we have now explored Flatwoods. I know this was a very... holotape heavy episode. And that's because Flatwoods probably has the highest density of holotapes in the game. I don't want to just skip over them. But we've gotten through all of that now, and we're going to call it an episode here. Next time we're going to, I think, head up the hill there to find the broadcast tower and to maybe find that ranger tower that we could see in the distance. So I've got my survival tent here, and we're going we're gonna to call it an episode. I'm going to lay down and get some rest. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.